Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to find the equation of the polynomial when you are given the graph and you're given a point on the graph. Okay, um, we do want to find this with the least degree because it is possible to have two polynomials with different equations that have differing degrees but will give you the same output. Okay, so a couple of things when you are given a graph there's some things that you can look for that will help you to identify some important characteristics of the polynomial. First thing is is that we know that both of our endpoints are pointing downward. So that tells us that we have an even degree polynomial. So it could be degree 2, degree 4, degree 6, etc. Okay, we also know so that it that since both ends are pointing downward, that our leading coefficient, or the value in the front, is going to be negative because of the fact that it opens downward. So when I find my A term, or the term that we use, um, it is going to be negative because of the fact that it opens downward. Okay, and then we can figure out what our least degree is by looking at our number of turning points. So if we look at this, our graph turns one, two, three times. And so when you are dealing with that, that tells us that n minus one will always give you the number of turning points. Okay, so since we have n minus one equals three, that tells us that the degree of this is going to be four. That's the least degree possible that we're going to have, which backs up the fact that it was even degree. Okay, um, so now that we've identified this information, that will help us with our exponents and that will help us know how many x terms we have to have. So from there, what we want to do is identify our zeros. So our zeros occur at negative 3, negative 1, and positive 1. So when we solved this equation, we got the solutions x equals negative 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals 1 as our solutions. So this is going to help us with our factors because if I take this to the other side that tells me that one of my factors or what I solved to get negative 3 was x plus 3. If I move this one over I get x plus 1 and if I move this one over I get x minus 1. So that gives us our three factors that we have. We know that we have to have f of x, and we know that we have to have a leading term in here, something that we multiplied by. It's going to at least be negative because of the fact that we know that it opens downward. So we will end up with a negative a term if we do this correctly. Okay, so now let's talk about the multiplicity. The multiplicity tells us how many times our zeros repeat. So remember that at our zero here, since it touches, that means that it has to have an even multiplicity. So that means the exponent on this factor has to be even. So the lowest even number that we have is 2, so that tells me that the exponent for this one is going to be 2. Both of these zeros, it crosses, which tells me that I want to have odd multiplicity. And our lowest odd number that we have is just one. So I have one of these factors, one of these factors, and I have two of these factors. So the multiplicity, remember, it tells us how many times a factor repeats. Anytime the graph touches at that point, then it's going to be even. If it crosses where it goes through and you have a sign change, then it has to be odd. Okay, so now we have all of the information that we need in order to help us find our equation. So our next step that we are going to do is we are going to use the given point that this graph crosses through, 0, 4.5. And we are going to use this point to find A. So all we're going to do is we're going to replace x with 0, and we're going to replace our f of x or our y with 4.5. So if I write this in here, I would have 4.5 equals a times 0 plus 3 squared times 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 1. And I don't have to write to the first power, it's just understood to be there. I just wrote it down so that you understood that that was our lowest odd multiplicity um, exponent. Okay, so now let's simplify our information here. So we end up with 4.5 equals a times 3 squared 
times one times negative one. And you really don't have to show this step right here. Um, I just wanted to not go directly to this so you could see where I got that answer from. So if I simplify now, I would end up with 4.5 equals 3 squared gives me 9 times 1 is 9 times negative 1 gives me negative 9. And then to solve this equation, all we would do is divide by negative 9. Okay, and when we do this, this simplifies into negative 1 half. So that's our last step in order to get it into um, factored form. So one equation of this line that we can say that this is, is f of x equals negative one-half times x plus three squared times x plus one times x minus one. And this is a completely um, accepted way of writing a polynomial equation, but sometimes you are going to be required to go from this form in to standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that in case you are required to write your equation in standard form. So this is the factored form, which gives us all of our zeros, and we know that our a term was negative one half. Okay. So now to go to standard form, all we have to do is expand this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this part here first. I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. And I'm also at the same time going to square this one. Because of the fact that they're independent multiplications, it does not impact the answer. So I'm going to keep the negative one half out in front. Okay, and so if I square this term, remember that when you square a binomial, you always have to square the first term, so that would give us x squared. Then you have to find the product of these two, which gives me 3x, and I always have two of those, so I would have plus 6x. And then I square the last term, which would give me 9. Okay, so now we're going to talk about multiplying these two together. Since it's a difference of two squares, remember with this one, when I FOIL out, I end up with x times x, which is x squared. I would then get negative 1x plus 1x, so those would cancel each other out. And I'm left with x squared minus 1. So again, this is not the easiest one to have to um, uh, multiply out in order to get it in standard form but sometimes you are going to be required to do that, so I just wanted to make sure that I didn't leave you in a place where you couldn't finish to that point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna distribute the x squared into the equation. I'm gonna still keep the negative one half on the outside just because that's gonna be the last step is distributing that in. So when I multiply the x squared in, x squared times x squared gives me x to the fourth. x squared times six x, gives me 6x cubed, and x squared times 9 gives me 9x squared. Okay, so then what I would do is I would take and multiply the negative 1 into everything. Okay, so negative 1 times x squared gives me negative x squared, negative 1 times 6 is negative 6x, and negative 1 times 9 gives me negative 9. Okay, so then our final step would be to take this negative one half and multiply it into every, oh, never mind. Let me simplify like terms first before doing that. It'll make it easier to do. Um, I forgot to add our like terms first. Okay, so the only like term that we have, and technically I could have distributed first, it just gives me one more to do. So I would have x to the fourth plus 6x cubed. If I add these two together, it gives me 8x squared minus 6x and then minus 9. So now I will do the final step where I take and multiply the negative one half into everything. Okay, so when I do that, my final solution would be f of x equals negative one half x to the fourth negative one-half times six would give me negative three x cubed. Negative one-half times eight would give me negative four x squared. Negative one-half times negative six would give me positive three x. And then negative one-half times negative nine would give me positive 4.5. 
So this would be my final answer in standard form. Like I said, a lot of times it's completely okay just to leave it in the factored form, but sometimes you are going to be asked to write it in standard form, and sometimes the multiplication like this one is not super easy. So just to recap, remember when you're given, always look to see do I have odd or even. Um, you can determine your leading coefficient based on the end behavior of your graph, and you can find your degree by the number of turning points. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.